Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist, Nick theologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of lower card catfishes. So today, let's talk about the actual natural ecosystem of the aquarium. And this is a really sort of big, tricky topic that shouldn't be simplified because it isn't actually that simple because it goes over quite a few ecological concepts. One of the big ones is aquariums are closed ecosystems so you are managing that inflow and outflow. Natural freshwater ecosystems have, whether it be lakes or rivers, they have some sort of turnover, but also usually, apart from in very extreme habitats like uh, soda and salt sort of lakes, which are very low in biodiversity, they usually have some sort of inflow, some sort of outflow. So it's usually rivers, they can be surface water, can be rain. So it's kind of that turnover of nutrients. If it's not, as I said of the salt, uh, sort of salt lake, sort of uh, soda lakes, kind of like that, nutrients builds up, minerals build up, and they become much more extreme. So a big idea in ecology that you might have learned from school or college or whatever is the idea of succession. And succession is this turnover of organisms that kind of change the environment to make it, well, change it into something that maybe suits more and more organisms, but it really depends on the actual abiotics, the actual general environment without the biotics um, around. And there is no one ideal succession. Uh, so you've got those salt lakes, their sort of succession is reaching sort of a very saline habitat that's got very low biodiversity whereas others might be having a little bit more biodiversity or a lot more biodiversity and having um, very well the usual high biodiversity have very low nutrients so what's known as oligotrophic so because there's so many organisms taking it up and we're replicating this a lot in aquariums through water changes which will replicate these sort of freshwater ecosystems that are having that inflow and outflow constantly. It's very, there's very minimal contribution from plants. Um, it de does depend on the habitat, but these oligotrophic, these low nutrient habitats, it's those that, whether it's outtake by rivers, whether it's outtake by maybe surface flow, maybe it's by groundwater sort of thing. There's so many different methods of uh, there being that turnover. And it's thinking about what sort of succession do you want. Do you want something that's very low in biodiversity because it's becoming much more of an extreme habitat? And also because it's kind of not being managed and it's still going through a very slow succession, such as these new water change tanks, that they're not really ever reaching sort of this settled point and they're very high nutrients. It can make them potentially very unstable and prone to crash as there will be imbalances in certain nutrients and minerals. But succession, thinking about it in the general aquarium context, is you've got the, when you, it starts kind of when you start your tank, you've got your, um, so just got the tank and you're cycling it and that is just the raw colonising time where you're just getting these nitrifying bacteria, your first colonizers, your most hardy uh, microbes in. And these are making it suitable for many other organisms. And this real initial stage might be only three weeks to, well, two to weeks, a month, maybe slightly longer. It depends on your individual circumstances. And these ones are making it suitable. They're changing this habitat to make it suitable for fishes and other sort of organisms, other invertebrates. And actually this succession to get a more stable aquarium doesn't just take sort of weeks, it can take months and eventually years to reach a certain state. And then you kind of, the way you're maintaining your aquarium gives you this sort of climax. So the climax is this settled state and this can take years, so you, if you're any sort of aquarium, you're going to get this sort of, uh, unless you're not water changing, so you're constantly fluctuating, 
So we're constantly raising and dipping some nutrients. So you're not gonna reach that, if you're not water changing, you're not really reaching that climax. You're constantly uh, fluctuating it. So, well, not even fluctuating, it's just constant positive feedback, I guess, because it's not reaching a point. If you're water changing, you're replenishing nutrients and removing nutrients. So eventually you reach this settled state and a lot of people say, oh, but settled state has the most biodiversity. Not always. Quite often this sort of settled state in an ecosystem, well, it usually plateaus then dips a little bit because there's nothing really that can easily colonize and there's nothing because the competition is so great, everything fills that niche. It kind of has to um, move out others to kind of replicate the niche. God, it's warm in it. <laughs> um, so it kind of, it depends on the aquarium and you can kind of see this in the algae that grow. So every aquarium will be different depending on your tap water, um, what you have in the tank, like deco, whether it's leaching anything and factors like that, whether you've actually introduced anything in the first state. So algae make it really obvious. When you first get a tank, that's when you kind of get the really unseemly algae. And these can take quite a few years to go. So I find the big ones are like diatoms, the sort of green algae, the very fast growing algae. And then over time you might get different ones. You might get black beard algae I get quite often and also diatoms are one if um, the tank sort of gets an influx of sudden nutrients. So when people think about algae it is that slow change and it's not just oh my tank cycled and it's been around a year. It can take years to re get that settled state and a big factor about succession is that all this ecosystem is there can be state changes. So this can be something that disrupts the ecosystem or can be a minor thing, just adding in a different decor. So fresh wood introduces some more nutrients and then a certain um, sort of microbes can suddenly just grow and then they're going to disrupt it slightly. But the more settled and the more stable your environment is, because you're water changing, because you're uh, replacing and removing nutrients, you've reached that succession, that managed succession, um, that managed sort of climax, it can return to its original state a little bit more easily. It can also affect um, when it comes to mini crashes or crashes in the aquarium the ability for the aquarium to be able to return to its original or original climatic uh, climax um, is gonna be like affected by how stable kind of um, how well managed how many like how well it's been cared for to be honest so it's not a simple topic as I'm not even going over how other than world changes how you will reach that managed state it's very dependent on the aquarium both of my aquariums here and my research ones have different sort of ecosystems involved the reason that introducing fishes doesn't disrupt it as much is kind of because like you're feeding them you're introducing nutrients the competition is a very sort of different to the microbes a big factor of this, it has to be that actual nitrifying bacteria. They are one of the most important um, sort of, I would guess, I don't know, you could say they are, oh, what's that, trophic level? They're probably not really, they're just sort of, they're the most, one of the most important organisms in this ecosystem. And one of well, if you're thinking about an ecosystem, you think about the organisms in it, you need to think about what helps them grow, what helps them survive, what helps them sort of diversify and respond to change. So if we think about nitrifying bacteria, this is the one that we're really sort of farming in a way. And they have reached that sort of climax because there will be this population. They're not going to increase anymore. They're not going to hopefully decrease. There should be just this sort of stable state. 
So what do they need? They need nutrients, so that's in the form of ammonia. There's also urea con um, consuming bacteria because fish will, some fish, not all fish, depends on the conditions, do produce urea. And then we're also thinking about oxygen and they need a dark place. Dark place is quite easy, filters are generally a dark place. So we think about those two factors. So, this is why mulm and detritus is not entirely ideal where you want to grow these bacteria because the mulm, the, um, the detritus, the fish poo, that clogs the um, flow of oxygen, clogs the flow of nutrients, those nitrifying bacteria are not growing there because they cannot get the same access to nutrients or there might be much lower numbers and they're going to be competing with uh, sort of decomposers. And do we really want decomposing bacteria in the aquarium? What do they provide for us as Aquarius? They might break down fish food, they're going to be there anyway. They might break, well, uneaten fish food, they might break down uneaten vegetation. But do, do you really want that entirely? What they do also, they will, they take up oxygen as well. They produce um, well they can take up other gases but they're um, they're going to take up oxygen they're going to that's competing with the fish it's competing with everything else uh, they will be producing other compounds CO2 me I don't know maybe not methane but they're also going to be producing anything anaerobically which is no real benefit to us and that comes into the substrate you're losing your substrate as a potential very surface layer um, nitrifying space if you're just letting it clog up with um, detritus and it's not really like looking at many freshwater habitats you see pretty much rocks wood sand maybe silt but just thinking about uh, your aquarium in a more complex sort of ecosystem rather than thinking that this silt you see it in some habitats, therefore it must be natural and therefore it must be better. It really depends on what you're doing and think about what you're doing. Because if you're far if you just want to farm the detritus and decompose and stuff like that, feel free. Um, but so a big concept of this is the management. So managing, as I've been mentioning, the colonizers. Um, so that could be what you're introducing or uh, well kind of also how you're going to manage what does well as a colonizer by altering nutrients sometimes you can't really help if you just want to go with tap water uh, rather than RO or rainwater and sort of alter it that way also thinking about that new uh, decomposition versus nitrification um, and just thinking about maintaining that succession that you want, that base level that you want, that can respond to change, that can respond if their tank is, could be prone to crashing or anything like that. Um, and also just any, if you need to go on holiday, it's gonna make it a lot more sustainable rather, and also maintain your higher stocking load. If the amount of nitrifying bacteria and how well like you can manage nutrients will affect how highly you can stock your tank um, but not that I recommend it for beginners and I don't recommend I think sometimes looking at the science is not always the easiest concept to do it's worth researching and just what don't forget to water change water changes are so important and the more you do kind of the better is they not removing any of the bacteria they're just removing the nutrients therefore it kind of is worth keeping a regular schedule because then I think that it's sort of that base level that if you're suddenly fluctuating it you also might be affecting what um, the bacteria feeds on so making sure it's kept on that level that is predictable for the level of bacteria you've got anyway I'm going to end this here and if people want me to go into more detail about certain aspects of it I can. I hope it was interesting and they're definitely looking at, if you look at the different organisms in these aquariums that you can see 
it can really affect what like the levels of these organisms also kind of make sense in terms of how you maintain your aquarium some if you've got more of some it hints that your aquarium is more decomposing things rather than like involved in um, nitrification and so sort of that certain stable state anyway thank you for watching if you like my videos please comment like and subscribe and don't forget we have a discord um, server now and I'll put the link in the description below and also hopefully I've shared it a little bit early in the video anyway thank you for watching